Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about cardiovascular exercise and the benefits and recommendations for how much somebody should be doing. Um, so there are countless benefits of cardiovascular exercise. And what I sh I'm showing here is really just scratching the surface. Um, so cardiovascular exercise can help to prevent these conditions or improve many of these conditions. Um, and again, this is just scratching the surface because think about what the cardiovascular system does. We're talking about the heart uh, being able to oxygenate blood. So the heart is sending blood to the lungs to oxygenate it, and then being able to pump that blood all throughout the body to deliver that nice oxygenated nutrient rich um, blood to all of the many structures and, and organs throughout the body. Um, so it makes sense that the better our heart and lungs get at being able to oxygenate and circulate that blood, the healthier all of the many different systems and organs are going to be throughout the body. Um, so cardiovascular exercise improves um, not only heart health, so things like heart disease, blood pressure, cholesterol, and all those sorts of things, um, but it also significantly improves um, mental health in many different aspects. So dementia, depression, anxiety, fatigue, addiction, um, and then all sorts of other musculoskeletal issues. So things like um, back pain, um, arthritis, osteoporosis, um, and all sorts of, of other conditions um, of the different systems throughout the body. So um, we're delivering this oxygen rich blood and circulating it throughout the body. And that is going to improve the health of everything in the body um, besides just the very important cardiovascular uh, health. Um, so there are some top predictors of mortality, meaning that um, people who have these certain characteristics are going to be more likely to die sooner than uh, somebody who does not have these characteristics. So these are predictors of mortality. The number one predictor of mortality is poor cardiovascular fitness. That's number one. So just by improving cardiovascular fitness, we decrease the, the likelihood of death. Um, and not only that, but by improving cardiovascular fitness, we're also going to improve some of the other things on this list that are also top predictors of mortality. So by improving cardiovascular fitness, we might also improve obesity, cholesterol, EKG, um, chronic illness, high blood pressure, uh, we can't change genetic history of coronary artery disease because we can't change if our parents have had it or, or anybody else. Um, and we can change smoking, but not through exercise. Um, but a lot of the things on this list are directly affected by improving cardiovascular fitness. Um, so this, I thought, was a really interesting uh, sort of visual. Uh, this is from the New England uh, Journal of Medicine. I gave a citation here in case you, anybody wants to look at this paper. Um, but this is showing that for people with these different uh, characteristics or these different uh, problems here, we can see along the bottom, the risk factors, um, we're seeing their relative risk of death based on their cardiovascular fitness. Okay, so this, this is showing their METs. So an MET is a metabolic equivalent. So one MET is the amount of oxygen consumed at rest. So just sitting at rest, how much oxygen are you consuming? That's one MET. So a higher number of METs means a greater capacity for cardiovascular activity. So if we're looking up here, if we look at our little key, the darker bars, those are greater than eight MET, those would be the people with the greatest cardiovascular fitness because they're capable of consuming and using more oxygen, which means they're capable of a greater amount of cardiovascular activity. Um, then the kind of middle bars is a middle amount of cardiovascular fitness. And then the light gray bars is the least amount of cardiovascular fitness. So for each of these, so history of hypertension, COPD, diabetes, smoking, BMI greater than 30, and total cholesterol greater than 220, 
what we're seeing is that the light gray bars, the people with the least cardiovascular fitness have the highest relative risk of death. Then people with a moderate amount of cardiovascular fitness have a moderate relative risk of death. And the people with the greatest cardiovascular fitness have the lowest relative risk of death. And there, that relative risk of death is one across the board for all of the different risk factors. So what we're saying is that with greater cardiovascular fitness, we can significantly reduce the risk of death, even in all of these different conditions. Now, if we looked at somebody without these other risk factors, it's even more favorable. Um, so higher cardiovascular fitness is a significant predictor of longevity. And that's been demonstrated again and again and again in the research literature. Uh, so how much cardiovascular exercise should somebody be getting to achieve that level of cardiovascular fitness? Um, so ACSM guidelines, the, the basic guideline for individuals who are healthy and between 18 and 65, is that we should aim for five or more days a week, having moderate intensity uh, aerobic physical activity for at least 30 minutes. or Instead of that, we could have vigorous aerobic activity for 20 or more minutes on three or more days a week. And then, of course, we can blend the two and, and have a compromise between the two because we may want to do some moderate and some vigorous. Um, but that is the basic guideline. Um, it used to be that we didn't count the time unless it was for at least 10 continuous minutes. So like you could do 10 minutes three times a day and achieve um, 30 total minutes on that day of moderate intensity activity. Uh, but that has since been changed so that any moderate intensity or vigorous intensity activity counts, no matter how brief it was. So that means like, even if you just take two minutes and take the stairs where you're going instead of the elevator, those two minutes count towards your 30 minutes because every minute of activity where you're increasing your heart rate to a great enough extent it does contribute and work towards um, that, that goal of cardiovascular fitness. So it does count even if it's less than 10 minutes at once. Okay, so healthy adults um, should be aiming for half an hour a day, at least five days a week of moderate intensity activity. And then if you wanna go more vigorously, then you don't have to do it for quite as long or quite as many days. Um, it's also recommended that um, everybody um, participate in physical activity that will help maintain or increase muscular strength and endurance at least twice a week. Um, and that can be all sorts of different activities. It depends on the starting level of the person as to what will help them to maintain or increase muscular strength. So somebody who's very fit and has been strength training for a long time will require a greater amount and um, greater intensity of work to be able to maintain or increase muscular strength compared to a novice who hasn't exercised yet, um, they would require much, much less to achieve that same uh, threshold of just maintaining or increasing muscular strength and endurance. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.